How old is the universe? For generations, people argued over whether the universe had always existed, whether it had a beginning, or whether it was cyclical, with neither a beginning nor an end. Our universe is not the spry 13.7 billion year old entity that we once believed it to be. Instead, it could be a grand 26.7 billion years old. This finding, according to a new study by Rajendra Gupta, adjunct professor of physics at the University of Ottawa, fundamentally changes our understanding of the universe and may solve the puzzle of the impossible early galaxy problem. We have wrongly estimated the age of the universe by looking at a century-old idea in the 1920s where an equation pivoted the direction of astronomy. In the 1900s, it was believed that the universe was static, neither expanding nor contracting. But Edwin Hubble altered everything. He realized that galaxies in space were in fact traveling away from us. And, astonishingly, there was a pattern in this happening. The further the galaxy was from us, the faster it was speeding away. V is directly proportional to D. Where V denotes the recessional velocity of the galaxy and D the distance to that galaxy. This gave birth to the most contentious numbers in astronomy. Hubble constant. This was the variable that described the rate at which the cosmos was expanding. At some point in time, all of the galaxies in the cosmos were near to each other before drifting apart. If we trace the origins of the universe back in time, we will find that all matter and radiation must have been gathered in a single location in space. Everyone has heard of the Big Bang, and thus the phrase Hubble time was coined, providing us with a time scale corresponding to the universe's expansion. In other terms, the universe's age. The Hubble constant, when calculated, offers an estimate of 13.8 billion years. Hubble also provided us redshift, or light stretching. When a distant astronomical object emits light, that light is stretched as it travels through the universe, bringing the light closer to the red end of the spectrum. As a result, the further the galaxy, the redder the light. This led to the establishment of the Lambert-Cold Dark Matter Model, or in short LCDM the model which is widely accepted in the scientific community. But there was another, Fritz Zwicky, a Swiss astronomer who was considered to be one of the brightest minds of his day. He was the one who first brought the existence of neutron stars and dark matter to light. In addition, he was a pioneer in the research of cosmic rays and supernovas and he was the one who disagreed with Hubble's interpretation of red light. And he came up with a new theory, the tired light model. As per Zwicky, light photons lose energy when they collide with other particles whilst traveling to us, pushing them towards the red end of the spectrum. This model was not dependent on the Big Bang. Then, on April 1st, 1948, the Alpha Beta Gamma paper published an essay with substantial evidence in support of the Big Bang Theory. The research conclusively established that elements such as helium, hydrogen and other heavy elements were formed during the universe's early stages, an occurrence that could only happen because of the Big Bang. With the accumulation of such evidence, the tired light model by Zwicky was ignored and faded into obscurity. But then came the James Webb Space Telescope. Well, that's the problem. The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. All of a sudden, we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. Now, it takes many billions of years to create a galaxy, like the Milky Way galaxy, with 100 billion stars, many billions of years old. But the James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang that are up to 10 times bigger 
than the Milky Way galaxy. That shouldn't happen. We are not just finding single stars, but clusters of them in the early universe. And that has the whole scientific community stunned. So now, let's tune the telescope in to galaxies being born. And oh my gosh, who ordered this? We're finding galaxies in the Dark Ages. The star clusters in question are called globular clusters, ancient celestial enclaves born approximately 13.4 billion years ago. They are not only the most massive and ancient of star groupings, but they also possess a peculiar characteristic, compositional variation among their stars. Picture this, stars born together, side by side, emerging from the same cosmic womb of collapsing gas and dust. Yet, despite their shared origins, they exhibit striking differences in the abundance of elements such as oxygen, nitrogen, sodium, and aluminium. This enigma, known as abundance anomalies, has perplexed astronomers for years, challenging their attempts to decipher the cosmic puzzle. Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. Now, I personally think that the solution to the problem is these are not baby galaxies at all. They're actually monstrous black holes. Black holes that formed after the instant of creation that's baffling scientists because they don't fit in the normal sequence of the birth of a galaxy. So I personally think that we're actually looking at monster black holes where perhaps new laws of physics are emerging. And again, if you can figure all this out, there could be a Nobel Prize waiting for you. <laughs> And it is here that Fritz Zwicky's long-forgotten, tired light model reappears. Rajendra Gupta, a theoretical physicist at the University of Ottawa, has suggested a novel theory. The fatigued light concept, on the other hand, does not explain the observations. Gupta paired it with a new model known as the Covariant Coupling Constant, or CCC. This concept is based on three constants, the speed of light, the Planck constant, and the gravity constant. They are believed to undergo variations that extend the timeline of the universe by not being constant. While they do not act as the solution to all the problems created by the discoveries done by the JWST, they bring a new approach different from the LCDM model. According to the CCC plus DL model, the universe is 5.8 billion years old at redshift 10 and 3.5 billion years old at redshift 20. As a result, there will be ample time for stars and galaxies to form in relation to the image supplied by JWST. And if the universe is dated according to this hypothesis, its age adds up to 26.7 billion years, which significantly modifies the prior calculation but there are loopholes in this newly proposed model of cosmology. The primary being, the constants don't seem to affect the experiments on Earth. So we are close to finding the solution, but aren't there yet. And with the way JWST is making discoveries, we might have to find the answer very soon. It will be interesting to see which model will the current and future observations that different space telescopes will bring in. Which one are you rooting for? So, would you like to travel to the other side of the universe or stick with us here at the edge of the universe until we meet again?